The two of us built this little platform out of scrap, wood, and epoxy to place the forward navigation light on. We would just have to screw it into place. As careful as I wanted to be here, the entire stainless steel pulpit is kind of wonky and crooked, so I would just be adding a little more expressive style to the area. I just had to find out the right size screw that was long enough, but would not come out through the top side. I drilled the preliminary holes, and then screwed it on. It's just a cap. You screw one, two, three from the top, and you put this one in, there should be one more screw. Here were the tools that I would be using to screw the light down onto the platform. This was just like measuring out proportions for a portrait masterpiece. Now that the light was in place, I wanted to remove it and drill the hole for the wires to come down through the platform. The cables coming out of this light are pretty small, maybe about 14 gauge. And now I left the next part up to Robbie. He of course wanted to zip tie everything into place and leave a little extra cable looped just in case the connection would need to be remade in the future. He would just need to open up the cable and expose some of that sweet, sweet copper. He also put into place some heat shrink tubing. All of the items involved in this project were sent to us by our wonderful patrons and supporters, by the way. Thank you again. He braided the wires a bit and slid down over the assembly some heat shrink soldering connector. Once I'm going to do two, two at once, you know, exactly. Mm. And then finally, some more heat shrink over the top of everything. Here at the bow of the boat, it's easy to have saltwater intrusion, of course, into these especially delicate little cables. I have to screw down that screw on the top. And the platform could also use another layer of epoxy paint. A project that has also been pretty slow going is the tiller post, or the upper portion of the rudder post and tiller attachment. At the middle workshop, there are some wonderful machines for cutting, drilling, and grinding stainless steel into the shape that we need. This is a used one, and it doesn't mind that it's worn. And when, and when it's cut, when yeah. the square is cut on this, this, this will be gone. But the shop is very busy, so it's hard to get a spot in line for the work to get done. We have been particularly lucky to receive a new video-making product to test out, however. 
two free lavalier type microphones. This is our first time using these kind of microphones, which allow us to record our voices closer to the source. So they're better for windy or otherwise boisterous conditions. The Lark M1 package from Hollyland comes with two transmitters or mics and one receiver. Hollyland claims that this can provide high quality audio with a range up to a whopping 200 meters within line of sight, and the battery is supposed to last up to eight hours. So after reading over the manual quickly, we brought the kit out to the windy beach. Choco. Come on, Choco. This is something I wouldn't usually bother trying to do because the audio would just be total garbage. It's very foamy from the mouth. Are you worried now? Yeah. Oh. Is it more? Uh, no, I got hit. Yeah, he's kind of limping, hey? Okay, I got it. It's those spiky things. I'd like to test how far away you can go from the camera. Okay, so what do you want to do? The bitch and moan the whole way I keep, as I keep going? Yeah. I wonder, I wonder. And doggy, pee pee on that. Mm -hmm. That's a big bird show. So you can hear the wireless connection start to break up here, about 50 meters away. However, I realized that it wasn't a direct line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver. If I pointed the camera and the receiver away from Robbie's mic, you could hear where the connection was dropping in and out. But when the mic and the receiver are in clear view of each other, everything is crystal clear, even with all the wind and waves and barking. So this is not sargasso weed, it's, it's a different kind. But it's similarly very stinky. You can pick it up from the top. The top's not poisonous, the bottom is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Jesus. So missing all, all the, 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 some tentacles are still there. And when you watch jellyfish, it's basically a gas filled bladder and then an eat. It's a colony of microorganisms. There's a the part that make the bladder and release the gas, and then an eat is all the springy blue tentacles, blue and white tentacles, which you have to watch out for. And luckily for us, yeah. not much going on. Not there. much going on on this one. Don't try that at home, please. Yeah, I picked it up by its sack, mind you. <laughs> you shouldn't be picking up jellyfish. It's bad for you. Oh, uh, uh, that looks more like a used condom. I think that's a used... Yeah, huh? That's a used man of war. No? Yeah, you don't want to be kite surfing and get, and get one of those on your on your leg or your, or your face. My wife filming a beautiful puppy. Setting up my camera with this system isn't complicated. I just connect the receiver to the camera's microphone jack. Well, I shouldn't move the microphone while I'm talking. There's quite a bit of settings on these microphones. For example, this setting that I have right now, it should be mono, meaning I'm using one microphone. It's green on the little receiver. It's still blue on the microphone, which I have tucked in so you can't see the blue. This is testing mono setting. Okay, stereo setting for the microphone. The little light is solid blue on the receiver. It should be two microphones, like two microphones come with the kit. One voice over here or one other voice over here. Stereo, two microphones. But in this case, I've only got one, one microphone out. And so you'll probably just hear my voice on one side. The other side is missing. This is the sound that you're usually gonna get on this camera. Just for reference, this is the sound that you would usually get with this camera without using the Lark M1 lavalier type microphone. Now we're gonna take another trip out to the beach because our friends from the boatyard departed Progresso and left us their motorbike to use until we leave. So thank you to our friends. Let's see how much you can hear of me when I uh, get this back for editing. We've got wind, we've got bridges, we've got motorcycle engine, dog on the motorcycle, we got everything. Everything against this microphone right now. So I have to say so far, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. 
the microphone works pretty well considering and I would recommend to others who want to improve their their video quality by improving the sound quality and a shout out to Hollyland yay for sending us this free gear to test out beach and wind test number two we have it on mono so just me talking today one microphone if you're interested in purchasing the link is located below the video Hunting. It's fish. They're probably going after mallet or something. They're hunting. There must be fish. And then we've got assholes on jet skis to, to try and run over the dolphins. Vosotros se metieron para frente. Él está haciendo miedo al pescado. Que va en dirección. Que el pescado se va. Ves? Está su amigo al otro lado. You've got one dolphin jumping to scare the fish towards the other friend dolphin in front. Robbie made some of these dried fish strips while he was last in Baja on the disastrous trip. He did manage to make some of these uh, fish strips and he's just gone to get some olive oil. These have been in his mum's freezer for the last two months, two, three months. They're definitely ready after being in the sun now a couple days, just like new. Just like, just like fresh. Because I think it comes nice and thin. It just melts in your mouth. Mmm. We're removing the skin. There's less to put in the jar. I think it lasts better if you skin it. Just putting a little olive oil, slowly filling them. This is where you'd like to have a nice working olive oil container. It's spilling oil, oil everywhere. No, these jars are not meant to close well because they don't want them, you to reuse them, so you have to be careful. If you They're not meant for storing sideways, that's for sure. Yes. These four jars of olive oil dried bonito are probably not even going to last a week around here without being eaten. They're not airtight too, which is 